say we even um, top up Liverpool and Manchester and uh, similar areas to us. Uh, do we have any profile of the, the users of it? Why don't we top the lead, uh, which is unfortunate in Will?
Refugees. Uh, as part of that role, I am the program manager for the Cheshire Merseyside, uh, for the Cheshire rural part of the Cheshire Merseyside STP. Um, so, uh, John Deepling came to this meeting on the 8th of September and went through an outline of the emerging strategy for the Cheshire and Wirral part of the, of the STP. Um, and since then, um, there has been a, uh, a submission from the Cheshire and Wirral uh, and Cheshire and Side NHS organisations and local authority organisations to uh, NHS England, and that was made on the 21st of October. Uh, since then, that, that full STP plan for Cheshire and Merseyside has been published on the 16th of November. And in addition to that, the Chair just wants to know there's been some appendices released last week to that plan. So uh, everything has been published now um, and is available on all the CCGs and uh, NHS Provider Trust, Trust websites. So today, I, I would uh, just like to thank you for the opportunity for coming here to talk to you about, about this plan. Um, I absolutely recognise um, the strength of feeling and uh, concern I think, that this national process has, has given to members of the, the public, our patients and uh, you as, as members. Uh, and I seek to try and give some reassurance t tonight um, that much of this plan is born from the Healthy Wirral programme uh, and that there will be additional opportunity for the uh, Scrutiny Committee and members of the and all our stakeholders to, to review and comment and can be consulted upon and engage with any additional plans. So, um, I just do want to spend a little bit of time just re-emphasising what, what the STP is. So it is, it is the way that the NHS five year forward view will be delivered. And um, some of you will know this, so forgive me for repeating, uh, that we, were, we are in a geography of Cheshire and Merseyside, and that is the second biggest STP area in the country with a population of 2.5 million people. Very diverse area, as you know better uh, than me. Um, as a consequence of that size, that area has been split into three geographies, and um, we are in that Cheshire and Wirral geography, um, which spans, I suppose, all the way from Macclesfield in the east over to, over to here in, in the Wirral. Um, Thing to stress, I think, that I wanted to get across in the, on this part of the presentation was that this plan has been informed by four transformation programmes in Cheshire and Wirral. So there's Health, Healthy Wirral, obviously in Wirral, <coughs> West Cheshire Way in, in West Cheshire, Connecting Care in what's called Central Cheshire, which is the area available in South Cheshire, and Caring Together in Eastern Cheshire. So, what did the Cheshire and Merseyside plan that was released on the 16th of November really, really focus on? Well, there were four key areas, uh, and I'm going to summarise it rather than read this out to you in total, but it's, first of all, support for people uh, to, to live better quality lives. Uh, some of you might just paraphrase that to prevention and self-care, there's probably more to it than that. Secondly, to provide joined-up care in our community. Thirdly, to uh, reduce clinical variation um, for our population. And, and fourth is reduce costs by reducing duplication in the health service, and some people might call this reducing back and middle office uh, costs. So I want to go through those in a little bit more detail. Before I do that though, I just want to um, sh share with, with members of the public and with, with members of the OBS committee where I think we are and where we are in, in this process, because I do want to provide some assurance around consultation engagement. So we've initiated the plan and programme. It's a national process. Um, we are still in that design stage of developing options to explore. And whilst I recognise there has been a lot of coverage of this, this is where we are in that process. And uh, we are mandated to uh, publicly consult and engage on any significant change to service provision. Uh, so John, John Dealing, who's the chair of um, one of our CCGs, the chair mentioned at the start of the meeting, is now the senior responsible officer for the Cheshire Rural part of the Cheshire Riverside STP. And he asked me to share this with you because uh, it's something you might be familiar with in terms of how we came to develop the 
Cheshire Willow Pass the plan by looking at our local programme here in the Willow. And John's just kind of done this slide, he's much better than me on these things. But he highlights five key areas which he thinks are part of the Healthy Willow programme, which feature heavily in the, in the Cheshire and Merseyside and Cheshire and Wirral STP. And they are, uh, resonate with those areas around prevention, self-care, primary and community care transformation, reducing unwarranted clinical variation, and provide collaboration to reduce costs. So this, this, this page here, it goes into, and I'm really apologetic at the back there, because you won't be able to, to, to see that. But this slide seeks to put some more granularity uh, to, the, to, to where we think some of the costs can be saved, so I, it was probably remiss of me not to mention at the start of this that um, if on our current levels of demand increasing in the healthcare and social care system, that uh, our do nothing scenario is, is, is that we will um, have a deficit of £318 million, an indicative figure, for Cheshire and Wirral by 2020 so it really hasn't been an option to, to, to look at nothing, we have to do something, and I know, I know uh, people are aware of this. So I just want to call out some of the figures, and um, without spending too much time on this chair, it could, it could take a lot of time, but I think it's important to look some of the detail. So we have this category here called demand management, which takes into account areas such as self-care and prevention, and uh, integrating services outside of hospitals. And there's a total there of £110 million. Pounds. I suppose the largest figure in there uh, is around that, that shifting of care outside of hospital. We think there is a cost saving there of, uh, of indicatively £38 million. Pounds. The second column here, the second cog, if you like, here, is the figures which we think we can save from reducing variation, unwarranted clinical variation. Uh, and I suppose a good example of this is, uh, we have six NHS trusts working across Cheshire and Wirral. Um, I, live, I live near Crewe, and you know, I like to think my local hospital is brilliant at everything, and, and so do they, I think. But I think there are probably some areas where they are really good in the best of the patch. If we can bring the level up to that standard, um, for some of the things that Cheshire do well, then I think we can, we can win and share best practice. I'm sure that's the case of rural as well. So that is what unwarranted clinical variation is. Um, there is a big figure here of 107 million pounds. And this is the provider efficiencies that our provider trusts um, have to meet as part of their business as usual commitment. So before the STP even came along, this requirement to save 2% on, on costs, operating costs, and that represents more than £7 million. And that is the largest figure in, in that COG. The third, the third category here is, the, uh, is £28, £29 million, pounds, indicatively, which is the amount which we think from doing some exploratory work we can save from procuring together, sharing best practice, streamlining our processes. We have 13 organisations in Cheshire and Wirral. And we think by doing things together, we can save that money. And, and sometimes when I give this presentation, people ask me why this hasn't been done before. Um, but I think there's some really good opportunities there for us to work together on. And then finally, a smaller figure of £6 million pounds right at the far end here, just identifying that we need to change our ways of working if we are to realise this. So in terms of engagement, uh, I mentioned this at the start, so I think it's, it's a critical point for everybody in the, in the room tonight is you know, we recognise the concern and anxiety that this national process has, has brought about. But to be successful, the STPs have got to be developed with and based on the, on the needs of the local patients, carers and communities and, and, and health and social care professionals. So this is not a choice thing, this is something we want to do and will do. So where there are parts of the plan which are already being agreed and communicated and engaged through Healthy World, for example, we will just seek to re-emphasise that and, and, and remind colleagues of that. Anything new that's in this plan, um, we will of course communicate and engage with you and our stakeholders to, 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 to meet our requirements. Uh, 
and I just put my name and contact details at the end there if anybody had any uh, questions after this meeting. Yes, and you can have to say a question. Well, we want to check.
to which is the alliance plan. Yeah, so I'm trying to find my place. It's not Jeff Will. It's not Jeff Will. around the uh, elective care centre potential for, for, for looking at that, exploring that option. Um, I suppose that there, there, is some, there is some evidence from um, orthopaedic surgeons working on the Plattenbridge site for, for that element of elective care that's been really successful from a clinical point of view for, for our patients. Uh, but that's not to say that that would be the case for, for everything of, you, know, you, you could do uh, on that site. Um, and you know, we're all CCG and, and the STP is really clear that we would only seek to place elective uh, services on the passenger site where it was good for patients and provided improved service for patients. We have, we have got a, 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 a kind of general problem in the NHS, a challenge rather, around safely staffing services on one site and consolidating care in one place. And that, that is something which we're very aware of in the development of this plan. Of course, sustainability. <coughs> Is a, a paramount concern to us because if we do if we do nothing, uh, we're still going to be left with a 318 million pound problem by by 2020 That will really poor adverse impact on many of our services. Um, so I would like to stress that you know, where it's been done sensitively and well, it's provided an, an improved outcome to patients in orthopaedics. But we need to explore the options whether that would be the case for all services, and, and I just don't know yet. Is it just driven by sustainability? Well, I think the second point is that we're going to be involved in the Sorry, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, I have to agree with you. I mean, I think if, if this is a national approach, 
process, which has which has had, I would say, a local authority officer engagement at a at a fairly limited level, um, but being represented in a in a steering group and membership group, but that has been limited, and the engagement with members has, has been slightly lacking, and, and we need it. and we need to put that right in this stage. I reckon.
I think what a lot of people have got worries about, and I include myself in this as well, is that this plan will be hijacked by those that want to continue to dismantle and privatise the NHS. And that's where I think a lot of our Further note. 
Further, it's very little detail included. Just many of the proposals would represent a significant variation in service delivery and would therefore need to be presented for scrutiny to this committee and possibly a Pam Merseyside and Cheshire committee before any proposal could be implemented. The committee does not believe that Borough Council can agree to the SDP without absolute clarity on the proposals and a meaningful process of consultation and engagement with elected members and local residents. And I'm going to put that to committee for approval. And I have a second for that. All those in favour?